Hey guys, I am back. <laughs> I want to talk about press releases today. I want to talk about the five killer components of a uh, great press release, or the five components of a killer press release. That sounds better. So anyway, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Nikki Woods, and I was in the media for, and still am a part of the media, but like two decades, so a lot of time. Um, and now I am a part of helping people learn how to use the media so that they can build their brand, build their book, build their business, um, that whole thing. So visibility really is like the key to not only um, you know creating a business and building a business you love, but generating the revenue that you want. So I'm all about tying that 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 whole thing together with the media and money and closing that loophole. And so that is what my intention is for 2018. So today we're going to talk about a press release. Now I got this question like a week and a half ago. Brenda was like, Nikki, tell us about the press release. And I was like, I will tell you tomorrow. And then life happened <laughs> as life tends to do. And I didn't get a chance to. So I wanted to make good on that promise. And I wanted to talk about that. So if you want a template, I have one of these. If you want a template for how to write a killer press release, you can type me in the comments below and I will get it out to you. Um, but let's talk about it, right? So people say, oh, the press release is dead. Press release is not dead, right? And so you really need to learn how to write a good one um, in order for saying that. So um, in order to, I mean, I'm sorry, to get the media that you want. And so let's talk about it. I'm doing too many things and, and my tongue is getting tired and we don't want that. So let's focus. <laughs> let's focus on five components of a killer press release. The first thing is that you want relevant timing, right? So before reaching out to reporters, do some research around your proposed launch date or whatever it is that you're doing, your event, your book being, you know, put out there, whatever, and figure out if there's anything big happening in the space around that time. So most media professionals are busy enough as it is, um, and if they're preoccupied covering other things or conducting other interviews, chances that you're going to get through to them and get a positive response are really slim to none. So although the same could be said when considering rapid response outreach, so if you have an announcement that's timely, and relevant to an ongoing conversation, you might want to consider jumping in quickly, um, and that's where you'll have the most success. So one, just one quick example of that is the whole Black movement, Black movement, Black Panther, uh, and the STEM conversation, and how you know really you know looking at that has become a really impactful conversation, and so really piggybacking on that has been great for some of my clients. And so, you know, you, even though it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle thing, it's entertainment, there was a real conversation about some really serious issues and the lack of girls, women, in the whole STEM conversation. And people were able to use that to kind of get their message out there um, using a story that they piggybacked on. So that's just a quick example. The second piece of it is that you want to write a compelling headline. So just like any other title, the headline really is going to be the reporter's first impression of whatever is in the press release. So you want to keep it short, you want to make it compelling, and you want the reporter to think, huh, this sounds interesting. I'll keep reading. <laughs> That's generally the response that you want. So headlines should be reflective of, of reporter headlines. So think about the articles you click on when you're scrolling through the news. Um, think about the headlines and the the, uh, the article tie you know titles that you see on the the gossip magazines as you go through the grocery store and and why it piqued your interest. And yeah, of course, you know, you're going to be sorry once you open it, but, you know, just going in, the title is amazing. And of course, we don't want our press release to disappoint, um, but we want our headline to be, um, like I said, amazing. Um, remember, um, and this is the third thing, that reporters are reading countless pitches and press releases a day. I would get 500 a day when I was with Tom, the Tom during the morning show. So you want to, and this is the third thing, you want to have an informative lead paragraph. So keeping the lead paragraph informative and, and concise and to the point uh, is really key uh, to getting details across. So beyond um, this, chances are that they gave you the rest of, you know, they will give the rest of the press release just a quick skim. So you want to make sure everything that is relevant and important is in that lead paragraph. So that said, be sure you answer the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why in that lead paragraph. Um, all of the, the, the press releases core details should be there. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the press release really should be just supporting what is in the lead paragraph. Um, the fourth thing is supporting quotes. I love supporting quotes. So most press releases, you know, are mostly facts. 
and they're really missing um, that human element and that you know that that spark um, that makes you unique and makes your event or your book or your product unique. So include a quote. Now, ideally, these quotes should come from your clients, customers, partners, that sort of thing. Um, people that have actually worked with you that can lend validation and credibility to your product um, and the announcement as a whole. So check with clients, people who work with you in the past and, and ask and, and it's just as standard doing business, you should do this anyway. Um, and then, you know, include those. If, if you can't do that for whatever reason, then somebody within your company or business, you probably probably or your main spokesperson, you can, in a, you know, you can do a quote. If they're two short, impactful quotes, you might be able to put both of them in there. But ideally, it should be from somebody who has experienced and loved your product, service, book, conference, whatever. The fifth thing is that you need to include a clear call to action. So whether this is access to your website, a sign-up sheet, contact information, um, always end your press release with a clear call to action. Never leave the people, the media personalities, media professionals digging to find more information. So in a time where attention spans are shorter than ever, have it readily available for them, just, I mean, at the click of a button. And, you know, like I said, and, and sometimes people overlook asking for the interview. They just assume, oh, I sent a press release. They must know I want to be on the air. And that's not necessarily true. And don't, I would never say, let's chat about this. Like, you know, and you think it's an interview and they think you're having a discussion over coffee. So you always want to do a clear ask for the interview if that's what you want um, and provide the times that you're available and the contact information where somebody will get you. Um, and then also they'll have a plan B. So say plan A is to get the interview and they come back and they say, we don't have any room for the interview because there's only so many hours, days, you know, whatever. We don't have time. Then what's the second ask? Do you want to be on the website? Do they have a community calendar? Ask for, for something else. Most media outlets now have a companion website. In fact, I would say if they don't have one, then they're not <laughs> a great media outlet. And so then ask, can I be on the website? Can I you know, contribute an article? Can I write a blog? Can you, know, can you put me on your community calendar? Whatever it may be, make the ask. Um, so just know that no two press releases are alike, but there really are some common threads among the successful ones. So if you follow you know, these five things, your next press release will be a killer one. I guarantee you. And if you want the template, don't forget, just comment me down below and I'll make sure that you get it ASAP. And of course, if you have any questions or if there's something that you want to know that you would love for me to talk about, just inbox me on, <laughs> on LinkedIn or comment in this, you know, in this post and, and I will try to make it happen because that's what I do. <laughs> I make it happen. All right, you guys, talk to you later. Thanks so much for joining. Um, and like I said, if you want it, come at me. If you have any questions, ask those too, and I am on it.